Hi, my name is John Hall. I'm the laser product manager for Domino North America. And today we're going to discuss laser coating on flexible films and how to eliminate waste and inefficiency in that process. So laser coating on flexible films are probably two terms you haven't typically heard together because the domain of coating on flexible films has typically been more traditional coating technologies. Coating technologies such as TTO, thermal transfer overprint, or a thermal inkjet, or a hot melt device. Now what do all those technologies have in common? They're all applying an external substance to the film to create contrast. And when you take an external substance and apply it to the film to create contrast, there's other factors you need to consider. And those factors are things like adhesion and dry time and durability of the code throughout the supply chain. And sure enough, those are the very issues that the flexible film suppliers have been coming to us and telling us those are the issues they're having problems with. And so some of the flexible film users are telling us this is a real problem for them getting good readable codes on their films. And, and some of them even say this is the number one challenge that they have in their production environment. The problem is when you code on a film, you code when it's on a web and it's nice and flat and well controlled. But the minute that film is wrapped around a product, it's no longer reworkable. So if, if uh, a customer has made a 50,000 unit run and there's a coding problem, there's one option. They have to throw that away. One of our customers illustrated the, the problem or the challenge with us by bringing a big bag. He had a clear plastic bag full of his products. And he brought them in to a meeting at Domino and set them on the table. And he said, what do you think of the codes? And so we started to dig into the bag. He said, no, just look through the bag. And we looked at the codes, and sure enough, they weren't great. They were missing parts. They were just, just not really good codes. He said, now hold the bag up and look underneath. And we looked underneath, and we could find actual full characters, letters and numbers that had released from the film just with the packages rubbing it up against each other in transport. And so that was his way of illustrating to us that even though they had a confident feeling in production, how in the supply chain the codes were unreadable. What the customers told us is that when we approached the coding companies for, for help in this, what they told us uh, or what they offered us was a proposal for a new flavor or a new version of basically the same kind of technology that we had been living with before, the, the te technology that wasn't getting it done for them. Here's what we want. We want permanent, consistent codes on every package, and we want them to be high quality. That's what we want. And so we heard their request, and we were like, boy, those attributes line up perfectly with laser coding. Laser coders put high quality codes on fast moving production lines with great accu accuracy and precision all the time. And the question was, could we, could we use that technology? Could it be compatible with flexible films? And so we had to look at um, the attributes of the laser, the attributes of the film, and get our R&D and sample lab teams on that looking at it. Because a flexible film is not one material, it's a layer of many materials, layers of many materials, and those, they can be in different orders, or they can be different thicknesses, and all that will affect laser codability. But the good news is, in a given application, even though the customer may have 70 SKUs, there's probably only two or three different film types. So if we concentrate on finding solutions for those film types, we can probably do all their SKUs. And that's sure enough, that's what we've seen in the projects that we've done. The other hurdle that we had in trying to do these projects was the film has been optimized for those traditional coding technologies. And that means uh, white boxes which is all about taking a dark substance and applying it to the label. So the white is there to, to give you a background to make the dark color pop. But that's exactly the opposite of what you would do to optimize it for laser coating. For laser coating, we'd prefer a dark color, and then we could uh, vaporize that color or ch bleach that color and change it so that it would show up. So that became uh, another hurdle for our, uh, again, our R&D and sample lab teams to, to work on. But in the process, they, were, um, they had to 
make a new approach. They had to take a new approach. They had to develop new tools, new application expertise. Uh, we had to look at different laser wavelengths, different optics, and probably most important, a different energy delivery technique. Because traditional effects like, let's say, ablation, which is a common laser uh, technique that we use, really wouldn't be suitable for, flex for most flexible films. So we had to create contrast at a more molecular level. We were able to develop uh, a nice dark code on the white code boxes, as well as the ability to code in the color, colored areas as well. Success, right? Ticker tape parade, confetti. But the customer being the customer said, hey, we've got uh, three more things that we need from you. And the first one was correct. We need a correct code. And, we, and so the bad news is people make mistakes. The good news is with coding automation, we can eliminate that human interaction. Therefore, the opportunity for error can be eliminated. And so uh, no matter where the coding information is coming from, whether it's coming from the ERP system or production planning or quality control, we can take that data and load it directly into the coder so there's never an opportunity for error. I mean, studies show that those of us, once we get a few hundred keystrokes, we're going we're gonna to miss key something. We're going to reverse the order of characters. So it's, it's just going to happen, but we can take the human error out of it. We can also use for PLC communication and control, we can use Ethernet IP, which is a standard option for the, for the laser product line. And I'm not talking about some cobbled up, inefficient uh, gateway device. I'm talking about true Ethernet IP with a Rockwell automation and compass partner. That's Domino. You can't get better than that. This, the second issue that they asked us for was, was easy. Um, they said, hey, all our, our corporations, um, all the corporate uh, folks have sustainability objectives that they have to hit. So if we're going to convert to a new technology, we have to be able to, to show that it's sustainable, it supports the sustainability objectives. And so the good news is with laser, it is a sustainable technology. It's, it's a green initiative. It's not using any kind of solvents. There's no hazardous storage or hazardous disposal costs. We're not adding anything to the film. So the check in the box for sustainability um, was, a, was a big deal for them. The third, the third requirement, uh, uh, a little more challenging. You're going to need to be able to install on new machines and then a series of existing machines of all different ages. And so, again, uh, enter the engineering team, spending a lot of time with machine builders and the customer going through. And the good news is that Domino was able to develop a variety of seamless integration uh, plans that where the, we, the laser mounts directly to the frame of the machine for a number of OEM horizontal wrapper models. So what we were able to do for the customer is to provide them with a permanent, correct, consistent code on all their packages, high quality, with a sustainable technology, and without them having to redesign their machines. So that was really the package and the happy ending that we were able to get to. Didn't happen overnight, took a lot of work, a lot of innovation and creative thinking, but working closely with the, the partner and their machine builder, we were able to get there. So, if you're having problems putting codes on your flexible films, if you're experiencing this waste and inefficiency, you don't need to be anymore. What you need to do is we will evaluate your films and then we'll generate a report for you which shows the most compatible laser, the code quality that you'll receive, and the production speeds that you'll be able to run. And so in doing that, we'll be able to pretty much show exactly where we fit into your, uh, into your production environment. However you want the codes to come to the, the laser, that all can be set up with coding automation as well. So if you are having problems getting good codes on your, on your flexible film project, product, projects, there's no need for it. You need to reevaluate your application. And you need to do that knowing all your options based on the new advancements with laser coding on flexible films. I'm John Hall for Domino North America. 